Welcome to the start of Chapter 2, Linear Relations and Functions. Today we're going to start with Section 2.1, Relations and Functions. This is on page 5 in your packet. By the end of today, we should be able to identify if a relation is a function and also use function notation. So what exactly is a relation? A relation is a mapping or pairing of input values to output values. Typically, a relation is just a comparison of two variables, x and y. That's what we're used to seeing it as. So let's get started with what domain and range are. So you should be familiar with these terms. You may not necessarily remember what they are, and that's okay. That's why we're going over it right now. So the domain is simply the set of input values. Another way we can think of it is it's the x values. Later on, when we start comparing graphs, you'll hear me talk about domain and range, um, specifically domain, in terms of can we build any vertical walls that contain our graph. And again, this is going to be more apparent uh, in the next couple of days when we're looking specifically at graphs and talking about domain and range. So then what is a range? Well, if the domain is a set of input values, the range is the set of output values. Or another way you can think of it is the y values. The hint I like to use for range when we're dealing with actual graphs is can we build a floor below our graph or a ceiling above it to contain it. And again, we'll get into this in the next couple of days. So let's talk about a specific type of relation and that's a function. So a function is a relation where there is exactly one output value for each input value. So what does this mean? Really, it means there is only one y value for each x value. So if I have one x value, it can only go to one y value. There's only one pair. If I plug in two and I get two different y values, it's not a function. So let's take a look at a couple examples here that determine whether it is, um, or determine our domain range and whether or not we're dealing with a function. So to determine the domain and range, remember we have to identify the input and the output values. So here we're going to de determine the domain and range and then we'll state whether it's a function or not. Okay, let's begin. So in example one, we've got a column of input values, we've got a column of output. Well, remember our definition of domain. Domain is the input values. So all we have to do here is copy down those values in that box underneath input. So we have negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, and one. The range, remember another way we can talk about range, is the output values. So all we have to do is copy down the values that have an arrow pointing to it in this box. So that would be 0, 2, 4, and 6. Doesn't look like 8 has an arrow pointing to it. Finally, we have to determine whether or not this is, in fact, a function. So remember, for each input, there is only one output. So let's go through. When we input negative 3, out comes a 0. 
nothing else. So, so far, we're meeting the criteria. If we input a negative 2, we get a positive 2. Nothing else. So far, so good. If I plug in a negative 1, I get a 6. Nothing else. So far, so good. If I plug in 0, I get a 4. Nothing else. So far, so good. And finally, when I plug in a 1, I get a 6. Nothing else. Therefore, it meets the criteria of a function. It is a function. For each input, there is only one output value. The scenario would change, or our answer of whether it's a function or not would change if, for instance, when I plugged 1 in, not only does it point to 6, but maybe it also points to 8. Therefore, that input value of 1 has two distinct output values. That cannot happen if we're dealing with a function. In this case, 1 only has one output value, so it turns out it is in fact a function. Okay, I want you to try example 2, stating the domain range and determine whether it's a function. So stop the video and give it a try. All right, hopefully we had a chance uh, to state all the information. Remember, the domain is also our input values or the x values. So all we should have done was repeat, write down what was in the x values, 2, negative 1, and negative 2. Now, I don't need to write negative 1 and 2 because I've already written it, so there's no need to write it twice. The range, remember, is the output or our y values, so we can just write down all the values there. So we have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. All right, so hopefully you got the domain and range correct. The tricky part now is determining whether it's a function or not. So again, the criteria for each input, there is only one output. So if we take a look, I have a 2 for x here that gives me a negative 2, but when I plug 2 in over here, I get a positive 2. We have two different outcomes here for the same input. That alone tells us it is not a function. We have another scenario. When I plug negative 1 in, I get a negative 1. When I plug a negative 1 in here, I get a positive 1. That cannot happen if we're dealing with a function. Therefore, this is not a function. Okay, the next step to talk about today is to determine what function notation is and how do we use it. Well, you should have seen and be familiar with linear notation. Linear notation is simply an equation with two variables. So you might see it as y equals 2x plus 3. You might see it as y equals negative x squared plus 4x uh, minus 10, okay, where we have two variables. Well, with function notation, the only difference is now we're replacing this y with a fancy notation of f of x. Everything else can stay the same. So f of x equals 2x plus 3 or f of x equals negative x, negative x squared plus 4x minus 10. Okay, so all it is doing is replacing that y with an f of x. And the way we say this is, this is a function, and then we name it, so in this case, it's function f because that's the letter out front. Sometimes you'll see a g, sometimes you'll see an h of x. Okay, it's just another name for a function. And then in terms, 
of x because x is what's on the inside of the parentheses. The way that we read this is f of x equals 2x plus 3. Okay, so you've heard me say that already. All right, let's go ahead and try some examples dealing with function notation. So this first one, uh, we have f of x equals x squared plus 4x minus 1, and I want you to evaluate when x equals 3. So what do you think we have to do? Hopefully you recognize all we're going to do is plug in 3 instead of x. So it's a straight substitution. So we have f of 3 equals 3 squared plus 4 times 3 minus 1. So we're just replacing the x with a 3. Always use parentheses when you're substituting. It comes in handy when we are dealing with negatives. So it never hurts to have those parentheses. And now all we have to do is clean this up using our order of operations that we talked about in chapter 1. So 3 squared is 9 plus 4 times 3 is 12 minus 1 and going straight across 9 plus 12 minus 1 gives us a 20 so we get f of 3 equals 20 so going back to that input and output when we input a 3 the output is 20 and we can think of it as an ordered pair of 3 comma 20 okay for your x and your y all right let's go ahead and try this next example again it's just using different notation instead of saying evaluate when x equals 2 it's saying find f of 2 which means the same thing so instead of x we're plugging in 2. So we use parentheses, so it's going to be 2 squared plus 4 times 2. Oh, didn't want that. Let's use some different color here. 4 times 2 minus 1. So we just substitute. Instead of x, we have a 2. And now we just clean it up using the order of operations. So 2 squared is 4, plus 4 times 2 is 8 minus 1, adding across, I believe we get 11. So f of 2 equals 11. Again, thinking about it in terms of input, if we input a 2, the output outcomes an 11. Okay? All right. I want you to try this last example on your own. Find g of negative 5 and g of 2a if g of x equals negative 3x plus 4. So first notice here, we don't have an f of x, we have a function g. It means the same thing, it's just a different name for a function. So go ahead and try it and see what you get. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to try and uh, showing all of our work, you should have gotten g of negative 5 equals 19, and you should have gotten g of 2a equals negative 6a plus 4. If you did not get that, make sure you come to class tomorrow with any questions that you may have. All right, thanks a lot. Have a nice night, guys.